Friday Mailer College of Medicine and Friends of Mailer. Lots to talk about in the world. Uh, first of all, look at the map. Mostly Russia, but also China is in the news. So I blew up Hong Kong, because Hong Kong is like on fire. It's a mess. In fact, last week they reported 26,000 new cases a day and almost uh, 250 deaths in the last, you know, almost daily. So they're really struggling in Hong Kong. But mainland China's numbers are also increased. Uh, their numbers are still relatively small compared to the rest of the world. But they are at the highest level really since the, almost the highest level since the Wuhan outbreak. As you can see from the very beginning, you know, they were up here at 3,000 cases per day. Now they're around 1,500. So it's really gone up uh, pretty dramatically. Most of the current outbreak is really being driven by uh, the, quote, stealth Omicron, which is the BA.2, the second version of Omicron. And the reason it's called stealth is because people have a hard time diagnosing it with the usual antigen capture test. A lot of research points out that it's, it spreads much faster even than the original Omicron, so almost 30% faster. And China has now closed down over 100 neighborhoods, almost 38 million people are in lockdown, and nobody does lockdowns better than China. And they're still having problems. So uh, what they've said is that 60% of these cases are asymptomatic and that they're really diagnosing them uh, by their tremendous screening programs, which may, may well be true. Now, it's interesting to speculate, although no one is talking about this. You know, it's in different parts of, the, of mainland China, sort of all appeared simultaneously, and somehow it was about two and a half weeks after the Olympics. But no one is saying it had anything to do with the Olympics. Even though people from all over China came into Beijing we know that many foreigners, uh, foreign athletes brought virus in, but it had nothing to do with the Olympics. That, that's what they're saying. Now, if you look at the cases of China, it is really quite a big spike. But don't be fooled, because if you look at this, the scale on this, it's 0.4 cases per million. Compare that to what's going on in the U.S. and other parts of the world. It's, it's not even a blip. So this is compared to our numbers, and that's because our numbers are like 500 cases per million. So yes, they're having a spike, but it's much, much less than the rest of, uh, of the world. Interestingly enough, uh, Europe is also having a, a bit of a, a spike. So you can see Austria, Germany, Greece, uh, Portugal, all going up again, all thought probably due to the Omicron BA2 variant. So. Things are looking good in the U.S., but once again, it always reminds us that there you got to be ever vigilant. If you look at what's going on now, we look great. And look how bad it was in January compared to even just March 7th and March 14th, we're improving. And my favorite map, which is the risk factor map from the CDC, <laughs> we didn't have any green for a long time, but most of the country is green. And, our, and in uh, Harris County, our county in Texas, it's, it's green, which means under 10, under 20 cases per, uh, per 100,000. And we're actually in Harris County down to six cases per 100,000. Our friends in Dimmit, of course, still high, 34, but coming down. And the Houston wastewater numbers are really good. It's 9% of peak values of about a year ago. So if you look at the national numbers for, for uh, wastewater, we look good. We're all blue. But there are hot spots in the country, Ohio, uh, northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin, around Chicago, uh, parts of Westchester County in New York and Maine. So there's still some hot spots, places where the wastewater numbers are going up. So once again, you know, while we think it's looking pretty good, there are areas of replication of the virus. In the Texas Medical Center, we're continuing to improve. We're down to 427 cases per day on average the last seven days. Again, we want it to be 200, not 400. And we're down under 100 cases hospitalized each day, 77. So that's almost down to our low at 48. So we're, we're really doing quite well. I'm very pleased. Almost you know, everything in, in our region is kind of returned to normal. But once again, that BA2, that second variation of Omicron, is increasing. It's up to about 11% of the viral isolates. So what's new in, uh, in treatment regimens? There's a really good study called the Recovery Trial that's run out of the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. And they, they were the ones that found that dexamethasone reduced uh, deaths in ventilated patients by one third. So that was their first study in June of 2020. They followed that up in February of 2021, so a year later. They announced that tocilizumab, a human monoclonal antibody to interleukin-6 uh, receptor, 
that's used to treat rheumatoid arthritis also reduced further uh, deaths in hospitalized patients taking dexamethasone. So another add-on trial. And just now, this past week, they announced that another rheumatoid arthritis drug, uh, baricitinib, that also inhibits immune response through the Jack family kinase pathway reduces deaths even further. So they looked at 4,000 hospital patients who, who were treated with the usual care, and then another 4,000 patients that were hospitalized that were treated with baricitinib and showed that it reduced uh, the chances of death by 13%. So the recovery trial is a really good study that's ongoing, always takes what is current standard and adds a new drug to it, and it's been very helpful coming out of uh, UK and the University of Oxford. There was also a really good review of long COVID in the British Medical Journal this uh, past uh, week, also looking at the role of vaccination in long COVID, uh, long COVID syndrome. So long COVID is when you have symptoms that people could experience over about uh, four weeks. So if you have four weeks or longer of symptoms, that's considered uh, long COVID uh, syndrome. And there's about anywhere between 30 and 60% of COVID patients will experience long COVID sim uh, symptoms. Uh, it's not inconsequential. I mean, uh, the U United Kingdom is reporting that 2% of their population is actually uh, suffering with long COVID syndromes. And, but what they showed was that if you're fully vaccinated, you're about half as likely to develop long COVID as if you were unvaccinated. And then they did another interesting study, which is to take people with a long COVID syndrome and then vaccinate them. People had not been vaccinated and vaccinated them, and that reduced the symptoms by about half. So once again, another good reason to be vaccinated, it reduces the chance of getting long COVID. And it also, if you've been unvaccinated and get these symptoms, it seems to help reduce uh, the symptomatology. So that's all very, all very good. So when you think about what's happening in the world, you know, I'm very optimistic, right? You're very optimistic. You look at US, it's great. You look around us, we go out to dinner, everybody pretends it's over. You're hearing governors, you know, California, Florida, declaring it's over. Then you look at China. Now there have, you know, of all the countries that are rigorous about lockdowns and making sure people don't get it and testing, China's the place and they're now having a peak. All of Europe is having a peak again. So, you know, we're in a lull, but I think it's really dangerous to say, well, it's all over and, and pretend. So what I would suggest is don't throw away all your masks, keep them around, keep following data on community transmission, it's really important. And I would suggest that we are likely to see boosters in the fall. Pfizer has just requested boosters for a second booster for people over the age of 65. Uh, and it, again, the other thing is, you know, let's not go through this <laughs> craziness about schools. We, I think we all know kids need to be in schools for sure. But this business about, you know, kids shouldn't wear masks and so useless and all that kind of stuff, that's kind of crazy. And in fact, there have been a bunch of studies showing that you can safely send kids to schools, but when they wear masks, it's very effective. So there was just recently a study that came out of the uh, MMWR, the CDC, looking at uh, Johnson County, Iowa. And this is one of those examples where uh, this, the state did not want to follow the CDC recommended, uh, recommendations, so they said no masks in, uh, in the schools. And so what they did was the, the, the county public health system launched a study between October 2020 and February 2021 for one year, and they looked at who, were, who got infected and if, were they wearing masks or not. And it turns out that if people were both, if the kids were wearing masks, it reduced the infection rate by about 50%. So, you know, they work. You know, if, like, they work. And if they weren't wearing masks, it rose, it increased the infection rate uh, it, by exposure by 25%. So, you know, they concluded that masks in Iowa were very, very effective. There was another study in Arkansas, very similar. They looked at 233 school districts and found that those people, the kids that wore masks, had a 23% reduction in coronavirus. That's exactly the same as the study that was done earlier in North Carolina. So all these studies show that while it's great to have kids in school, and we all push that, and I think it's important for the future, maybe we'll need it in the fall again, but there's nothing wrong with kids wearing masks and it does reduce the transmission. So, uh, you know, this is a great week. We had uh, a really unusual uh, religious holiday synchrony. Uh, on Thursday, of course, it was St. Patty's Day where, you know, we celebrate the arrival of, of the patron saint of Ireland, St. Patrick's. Uh, and we celebrate that by drinking green beer. I mean, how else would you celebrate it? But uh, amazingly enough, it was also the Festival of Purim that commemorates the saving of the Jewish people from destruction by the ancient leader of Persia known as Haman. So what, what do Jews do when we, when we celebrate a religious holiday? We eat. 
you know, Irish drink, we eat. And we eat what's called hamatashin, which is uh, the literal translation is the, Haman was the Persian uh, uh, leader, and the, we, they're called the ha hamantashin, which is the uh, Haman's pockets. Actually, it looks a little bit like his ear, so it's not, not very appetizing, but I think we're eating the Persian dictator's ears uh, while the Irish are drinking green beer. But what a great, what a great <laughs> confluence of holidays. It doesn't happen every year, it happens every thousand years or something. But anyway, so, you know, of course, Lily had to choose. So what did, what did she do? <laughs> she, she went for the green beer. <laughs> no, <laughs> what are you going to do? Anyway, uh, have a great weekend, and I can't wait to see you next week. <laughs>